guys, I'm about to do something I should have done a long time ago. I keep getting asked about first aid, snake bot. Well, years ago, I did a thing on um, on first aid and what to do, what not to do. But um, <coughs> I had all my YouTube videos removed, and the only reason why I did the YouTube videos in the first place was to help the public out. Now let's be hypothetical here. I know, and you know, that this little snake here is a harmless carpet python. Unfortunately, one of the biggest misconceptions and one of the biggest problems with snake bite, as soon as somebody gets bitten by a snake, they try to think or identify it themselves, or they think they know what they're being bitten by. That's a very dangerous thing. I think the best bet is that if you've been bitten by a snake, don't try and think you know what it is. Treat it like the worst possible scenario. Let's just pretend you're working in the garden. And this little carpet here is acting in food because he's got a, a face full of um, mouse, mice there. So he thinks I'm for food. Now let's just say hypothetically I accidentally got bitten like I just did then. First thing is, everybody thinks there's going to be the stereotypical two fang puncher mark. Snakes have over a hundred teeth. Quite often I've been bitten and they rip the skin. Sometimes once an eastern brown bit me, threw a snake bag and just left the tiniest little mark on my finger. It does not have to be the stereotypical puncture marks, the two big puncture marks. So, ouch. If by chance you've been bitten by a snake, pretend that it's an eastern brown. First thing you do is you don't cut the bite site. You do not wash the bite site. You do not get your mate to try and suck the venom out. Uh, you do not do anything silly. You actually leave the bite site as it is. And one of the reasons why, let's just say that was a tiger snake and it bit me then, the doctors can do a swab and that helps them identify what species of snake you've been bitten by. So you leave it. You grab yourself a 150 mil or thereabouts compression bandage. Now, that snake just chewed on my finger then. You grab that compression bandage and you try to stay calm because the venom actually travels in the lymphatic system, which is the fat layer just underneath your skin. And what that lymphatic system is, is like the sewer system of your body. So that if you've got a bindi or, or something silly and it's got into your skin and it's got a toxin, it gets rid of that toxin, goes through all your lymphatic system and you end up pooing it out the next day. Now snake venom actually depends on that lymphatic system. So the more you're active, the more faster and the more effective the snake venom actually works in your body. So the first thing is to stay calm. Then you grab that compression bandage and you wrap it over the bite site. You wrap it about as tight as if you'd sprained your wrist or something. Not stupidly tight to make your hand go blue and drop off. And you wrap it all the way up your limb. In this case, all the way up to my armpit. Now what this does is applies pressure to that lymphatic system. So it, in effect, slows down. And buys, buys, slows down the effect of the snake venom and buys you a little time. Now, if by chance I was bitten by a snake, I would then get, try to remember this, I've never done it, but you can get a pen and draw a cross on the bandage where the snake has bitten you. Now the purposes of this is if I'm on my way to hospital and I pass out, well, the doctors go, well there's a cross, this is where the snake bite is. Let's spread the bandage there, do a swab, or see if there's any signs of um, envenomation, such as swelling or anything like this. If you don't put a cross on it and I pass out, then the doctors have got to start moving and moving that bandage around, removing the bandage. And that unfortunately helps the, or allows the snake venom to get back to work, if you know what I mean. Now the next thing, okay, I've been bitten, I've administered first aid, I've put the cross on there, I don't jump in my car and try and drive myself to hospital. If that happens and I pass out on the way to hospital, well then I'm going to have a head on with somebody and kill myself and the lady down the road. So, I either get my neighbour or whoever's with me at the time to drive me to hospital and I will usually, in my case, grab the phone and ring the hospital and say, it's me, snake man, I've been bitten by a, a snake and I'm on my way. This is what I think it is. Another thing you can do if you're by yourself is call an ambulance. You pay for it these days in your electricity bill. Now, by applying that pressure and by staying calm if you can and then getting yourself to hospital, the chances of dying by a snake bite are very slim, unless you have underlying health conditions like heart problems or kidney problems to start with. 
Sometimes people with nine sheets of the wind drunk, that also expedites the process. Now a lot of people think that if you get bitten by a snake, it's death. Sure, if you ignore it and do nothing about it, it's going to ruin your afternoon. Definitely. But these days the doctor's got it down pat so well, and the anti venine is so sort sorted that the chances of dying, if you don't have any underlying medical conditions, are very, very slim. My theory is that a healthy bloke gets bitten by an Eastern Brown at lunchtime, if you administered first aid, he will be watching home and uh, miss out on home and away that night, but he should theoretically be back at the moan and lawns the next day. Obviously you, you ignore it, and your family could very well be organising your funeral. So guys, this five dollar bandage is the difference between life and death. If you're going bushwalking, you work in an area where you think there might be snakes, well, just for the heck of it like me, I'll put them in, gl in the glove boxes of my car, on my bikes, in my pocket, I'll keep them everywhere. Because obviously I'll work with better snakes, and this is the difference between seeing tomorrow. Anyway, if you have any questions, ask me. Have fun.